Hey guys and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop. Got another good tool review for you today. We're looking at the BTC 500 DP. The DP stands for Dual Power Plasma Cutter. So if you guys are familiar, they've made welders and stuff before that plug into different sources. This is a plasma cutter that does the same thing. So you're not limited to just a 240 volt outlet in the shop. If you need to, you can run an extension cord somewhere and plug this into a regular 120 volt source. Not to mention, check out how small and light this thing is. You throw it in the back of your pickup, in the trunk of a car, whatever. This is really user friendly so you can use it in more applications than just the shop. So if you guys are interested in seeing what this thing's all about, stick around. So guys, like I mentioned, the highlight of this thing is the fact that it's dual voltage. You can plug it into a regular 120 outlet or the 240 that's in your garage or your shop that you use for your welder and other stuff. So you have different power ranges, meaning that you have different thicknesses of material that you can cut. Please excuse me, let me pull out my notes. I wanted to make sure that I get you guys proper specs here, not just spitball it. With 120 volt input, 15 to 35 amp output will allow you to cut 12 millimeter thick material or roughly half an inch for us imperial folk at the 240 volt input setting you have 35 to 50 amp output and you get roughly 16 millimeter or 5 8 ish thick material that you can cut and this is all using roughly 60 psi of air because in case you guys are unfamiliar with a plasma cutter and how they work, it creates an arc just like a welder, but then it is followed with compressed air and pushes that molten metal out of the pool. And that's what allows this thing to actually cut. So essentially it just melts metal and blows it away with air, but that's how you're able to cut this thing without using a fuel gas like a traditional torch. Now I know I'm rambling. Let's get into this thing and see what's all in here. Now, if you guys have followed me for any amount of time, you know that I am personally a Miller fan. However, I can see the value in going with something like this because at the time of this video anyway, this list price on Amazon is 250 bucks currently with a $20 off coupon. I mean, try getting a Miller or a Lincoln Electric or an ESOB dual voltage plasma cutter for that price. It's not gonna happen. And unless you're like a legit fab shop that's using this thing all day, every day, dude, I think for the regular Joe that's doing stuff in his garage or you know on the farm, whatever, if you need a plasma cutter, but you don't need a plasma cutter, dude, this thing's gonna be your huckleberry. I'm telling you, this is gonna save the wallet and it's gonna make your projects go so much easier. So here, we got a box of consumables and all the leads and everything. I'll bring you guys in once I have this all out on the table so you can actually see what's in the kit. Well, here we are with the contents spilled out on the table. We have the BTC 500 itself, and look at this cute little thing. I mean, if I had to guess, this thing probably weighs five pounds, maybe. I mean, there is nothing to it. You can easily swing this around with one hand all day. And you guys see here, the power cord that is physically attached to this thing. We have the 240 volt plug just on it. And in the consumable kit here, there is an adapter whip that allows you to plug this thing together and turn this into a 120. So that's how we're able to get that dual voltage thing. The cord that's on the machine stays there and you just use this adapter to plug it into a regular wall outlet. Looking further on the back here, we have a regular on off rocker switch. And then we have the input for our shop air. It looks as though that they're, they've included a dryer, so that's awesome because having dry air with a plasma cutter is a big deal. You don't wanna pump all that moisture and water from your shop air through this thing because that can really ruin it prematurely. So if you don't have a dryer or a separator on your shop system like you should, at least this thing has a backup to try to stop it before it goes through. And we have a big internal cooling fan here, so that's nice. On the front of the machine, we have a bunch of controls and hookups and everything, a uh, multi-display digital here, but uh, we'll get into that once we plug it in. 
Going further into the consumables here, I don't know necessarily consumables, but attachments. I have a little bit of air hose here so we can rig something up on the back of this should we need to. Ground clamp with the quarter turn quick connect like you're used to on your welding machines and a decent ground clamp. Here's a little baggie full of consumables. They even give you a little bit of Teflon tape, some uh, hose clamps, like this kit is everything you need to start working right out of the box. Then last but not least, we have the torch lead. Oh, that's nifty. They even give you a little uh, nozzle wrench there. Oh, look at that. Got a safety on the trigger. <laughs> I'll tell you a fun story about that and why that's important here. <laughs> Look, we got a little uh, metal nozzle guard here. Because uh, if you guys have ever used one of these before, you know it's super tempting to just lay the tip of the nozzle on your workpiece and drag it across, but that prematurely degradates your consumables in here. And this thing helps you just uh, maintain that arc distance between you and your material. So nice. And I got to tell you, this thing actually feels a lot better in the hand than I anticipated. Like I wasn't expecting the highest quality in the world, but this actually feels pretty good. Then on the back side of the leads here, we have our hookup for our compressed air, our power and our ground. This seems pretty straightforward. Let's just throw it together. Oh, we might as well start off with uh, tearing off the band-aid here. <laughs> That's like taking the plastic off a new TV. Never gets old. So let's start off by hooking up our torch here. And from the looks of things, this is pretty self-explanatory. I kind of feel like uh, certain things will only go in certain places. So we have our hot lead here. It goes on the stud. There is a washer here. We'll put the lug on first, then the washer, and then our cap. Crank everything down by hand. I'd say this is nice that you don't need tools to tear this thing apart. So in the case that you are transporting this in the trunk of your car or something, it's real easy at the end of the day to just rip this thing apart by hand so you can collapse it and put it where it needs to go. Now we have the controls for like the trigger and all that. That's a cute little Amphithol connector here. It just snaps together. And this bottom one appears to be where the air goes. Now if I can get my big dumb fingers out of the way, maybe I can get this hooked up for you. Yeah, there we go. This is kind of like a, uh, a baby JIC fitting. Like there's a male bevel on the hose side and a female here on the base unit that accepts it. Again, this is just all screws together by hand. Just go until it's tight and that's satisfactory. <clears throat> the only thing we've left to do here is hook up our ground connection. This is the just like the whip on your weld machine if you're used to it, it goes in about a quarter to a half turn to the right. And that's it, that's it for hookup. I tell you what, since we have a 110 plug here hanging over the bench, let's just plug that in and fire it up and see what it looks like. Well here, so you guys can tell that I'm not lying to you. I have the adapter in, we're just gonna plug into a 110 extension cord. Go ahead, hit the button on the back there, fire this thing up. Wow, look at that snazzy startup screen. Well, that's cool. It tells us our PSI and we have an error code. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that means that we don't have any air pressure since I don't have my shop air hooked up to it yet. But uh, at least we do get some code so this thing will yell at us if we're doing something incorrect. Now, right off the bat after the error code, I see here that the machine is telling us that we're hooked up to 110 volts. So that's cool. I mean, in case you don't know what the heck you just plugged it into, it tells you, so that's cool. And I'm gonna actually have to look through the book to see what all the functions do, but I'm guessing this is how we change 
settings and things like you just select what you want to do and then change it uh, I don't know I might actually have to figure out what's going on here but uh, for sake of argument let's just plug the shop air in and see if we can't get an arc out of that gun huh Here goes nothing. Let's see if that error code goes away whenever we plug this thing in. Look at that! It's almost like this thing has a digital pressure regulator and it knows when you're plugged in. That's another cool thing. So Timbo over on the other side of the job site decides to mess with you during work. He's over there pinching your air hose or something or somebody disconnects it to use something else. At least this thing will tell you what the problem is. You don't think it's overheated or something. Like, you know what the issue is if you're running out of air. I, I know, I'm rambling here, but th that's cool. I'm just happy that it tells you something. Now, on the front here, the big knob, is our pressure regulator. Honestly, I think this is just like a regular air regulator, like it feels like it. And it tell you, tells us here on the screen what our PSI is. So, huh. Let's just uh, hit the button and see if we can get an arc out of this thing. <laughs> oh, I was not expecting that from a 110 extension cord. Woo <laughs> oh. Did you guys notice it even has a post flow? Man, I'm, I gotta tell you, I, I am more excited than I thought I would be about this because you guys may not know I was a welder in a past life. So this was a big part of my everyday thing. So I've used a lot of these in the past by multiple different brands. And there are functions and features that you start to learn and love about different brands that other ones don't have. Like, let's just say you've used an ESOB for the last five years and now all of a sudden you're on a Lincoln. You know, things change, not saying it's bad, but you get used to what you get used to. And having that post flow is cool in fact i don't even have to set it up or look for a parameter or something in case you guys don't know what i'm talking about post flow is after you hit the trigger the air keeps running that means that the air from our compressed air system continues to go through the torch tip after the cut is complete to cool down our consumables and help extend the life of the consumable because i keep on saying consumable the tips inside of here are consumable, just like the tip inside of your welding torch. They do go bad and you will need to replace them. And the cooler and the cleaner you can run this thing, the longer it will last. So the fact that it already has that feature built into it, awesome. Way to go, Best Arc. Now, I mentioned this little safety over the trigger here, so you can't accidentally bump it when it's running. I told you I had a story about that. I'll be quick, I promise. Whenever I worked at the steel mill, we had a dude over there cutting pieces with a plasma torch, okay? But if you guys know, if you do this kind of stuff for a living, getting rid of safeties, I, I know it's not by the book, but it's something that people do to make their everyday mun tasks easier. So we had a fella that took the safety off of the trigger, or maybe the gun didn't even have one. I don't remember, this was a long time ago. but. He needed to get something. So what does he do? Grab the whip and toss it over his shoulder. <laughs> Dude, apparently the stars lined up for that guy and whenever it came back and hit his back, it also activated the trigger. And dude, this thing lit up and put a quarter, like a US quarter size hole right over his kidney. And it's, I mean, not, not going to the hospital bad, but enough to make you regret that day's decision bad. So just the fact that they've thought about stuff like this, it's nice. And it's not cumbersome either, like it's easy to use. You put your finger underneath that and then pull the trigger. And I don't know about wearing gloves, but uh, either way, it's nice that it's there because I don't want a quarter size hole in my back. <laughs> I don't know about you. But I guess uh, let me flip through the book real quick to understand better what's going on on the front here so I can get you guys more informed decisions and properly explain what's going on with the display. So if you guys know me, I am Mr. Anti-Instructions, but this booklet is actually really useful. There's a lot of good stuff in here. 
So let me run over what I found out about the display real quick. Obviously, this is a digital readout for our air regulator. This bar graph on the left hand side, you can tell how there's red lines, there's green lines, and on top there's even more red. This will tell you whenever you spark up your arc, if your air is in the correct range. This bar will go up to kind of visually display the amount of air you're using. If it goes up too far to where the red lines turn on, that means that you have too much air for your arc settings. And if it doesn't go up far enough, it will only illuminate these red ones to let you know that you don't have enough air for what you're doing. So that's cool. You don't even have to refer to the manual. You can just kind of gauge it off of this, hold your arc on and adjust your regulator to the point where this is happy so you know you have the correct amount of air for what you're trying to cut. Now we've already gone over some of the little labels here. This one tells you what voltage you're plugged into. This one simply means that the fan in the unit is running. This one over here is how we adjust our amperage. And obviously, your amperage range is going to change based upon your input voltage. So like I mentioned in the beginning, if you have this thing plugged into 240, this will go up to 50 amps to allow you to cut roughly 5 8 thick material. So whenever you're plugged into a regular 110 extension cord like we are now, you have like five to 35 amp. But I mean, this all depends on the 120 circuit you're plugged into, whether it's a 15 or a 20 amp circuit, you're gonna be limited. So keep that in mind. If you are using a 120 source, you're only gonna be able to do so much. I'm sure that this thing has a duty cycle just like any other welding machine, that it'll only do so much before it gets too hot and it'll either trip this thing out and I'm sure that we'll get an error code for heat in this thing, or you will just pop the breaker on the circuit that you're plugged into. So just pay mind to that. This selection over here where it says cut, this just changes the output of your physical torch. So right now we're set to cut, so I can grab the torch, hit the trigger and go. If we change this, can you guys hear that? That just means that I have air coming out of my torch that allows me to set my regulator, get my post flow and all that set up. It's just cool that I can command the air on so we can do this. Because if you guys know, setting a regulator, you have to have flow going through it. You can twist this knob all day while it's off and you'll get a reading change, but it won't be accurate. So you have to have flow going through your torch to accurately set your regulator. That's nice that we have that option. So you know how we had that error code up here whenever we first plugged it in and had no air? That was an E05, that means low or no air pressure. E02 means it's an overheat protect protection. And E01 means that it's an overcurrent protection. So this thing monitors the amount of current going through it as well as heat. So I'm sure that there's a heat sink inside of here with a thermocouple that goes to the microprocessor and tells us what's going on and we actually get an error code display. Super nice. As far as this center section here, this 2T and 4T, I'm not 100% certain what this means, but I feel like this is what we change when we do different consumables. So a number two tip, a number four tip, uh, I'm not really sure because it doesn't really change the output of the torch. Maybe it will change whenever we have a different input voltage, but uh, at this moment, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Over here in our last selection on the menu, this PT means post time and post air. So this allows us to change the post flow on the torch that I was talking about. So here we have it set at three seconds for post time and for post air, is six seconds. So that tells us how long and how much air is coming out of the torch after we let go of the trigger. So the post time means how long the arc stays on for once I let go of the trigger. So this might be 0.3 seconds actually. And then post air time is six seconds. So after I let go, I can change that. And we simply use the knob over here and you can set it to whatever you want. So this is really nice that we have the ability to adjust that post flow. So now that we kind of have a handle on what's going on with this thing, I guess the only thing left to do is throw some sparks. Let's get at it. So according to the chart in the booklet here, I got a piece of quarter inch thick angle iron. We're just going to use that to just try some stuff. Uh, let's just set it up at the maximum here for 110 volts. Let's do uh, 35 amp. Let's just crank it up. Why not? And it wants us to use 50 to 60 PSI. 
So, we can turn on the output without touching the torch. Nice. And crank up our regulator. And there you go. 55 PSI. Now, according to this thing, we should be good. Now let's uh, rock some PPE here. Now this is a do as I say, not as I do situation, fellas. You do you. I'm using an auto dark helmet. Throw on your crappiest shop gloves with all the fingers blowed out. And uh, let's give this thing a go. Now guys, keep in mind, we are plugged in to a 120 extension cord. One of them crappy reels that's on the top of the bench here. Let's just uh, see what this thing can do, huh? Well, <laughs> I guess we can hook up our ground clamp, huh? That would probably help. So guys, you may have seen that it was skipping there and everything. This thing tells you what's going on. So like I mentioned, there's that bar graph next to the air. There was too much air and it seemed to have been like blowing away the arc. And this thing was yelling at me with that red bar graph telling me, hey guy, you got too much air. So, okay, let's use the manual as kind of like a, this is where you want to start. But then whenever you're actually cutting, you kind of manage the machine settings as it goes. So I still have this thing cranked up to full tilt at 35 amp, but I necked down the regulator to 45 instead of 55. But uh, let's give this a go and see if we can get a full arc and cut a corner off of this thing. <laughs> Dude, I got a little happy on the trigger there. But guys, keep in mind, we're running this off of a 110 volt extension cord. This is unreal that we can do this. Like you could plug this thing in an outlet in your kitchen next to your coffee maker and cut quarter inch iron. Now, like I mentioned, keep in mind that we are limited by our input voltage. I'm sure that this thing will run eons better when we're plugged into 240. But if you need to do something small and dumb like this, or like cutting sheet metal for doing a fender on your car or something, that 110 is gonna be more than enough. But either way, let's plug into the 240 that I have for the welder right here, and then see what this thing's really capable of. Of course, I got like just enough wire to not make this work. Oh, there we go. All righty, now we're plugging into 240. Spark it up, see what you got. Nice, we're doing a startup. It says right here on the screen, we're at 220 volts. Let's crank this up to 40, I don't know. And we'll keep the air pressure the same just for sake of argument here and see what we got. If you guys couldn't tell, that was eons better. So I got a piece of solid quarter inch angle iron here. I just whipped through it in a couple seconds. And if you guys are familiar with plasma cutters versus an oxy fuel torch, this is so much cleaner. Like yet yeah, you can still get the smoke in the room because you're creating an arc, but you don't have all that off gas like you would with an oxy fuel. This thing is so bloody awesome. Now let's throw something bigger in here just to see what this can do. I think I got a piece of half inch or five eight square block around here. So let's see what we can get. All right, you guys, I found us some square stock here. Well, rectangle stock, whatever. But we got a half inch thick, which according to the book on this thing is roughly its maximum, which I think for what we're using here is absolutely awesome. But we'll go ahead and crank this thing up to 50 amp full tilt, set our air. Let's go 55. And uh, let's crank this thing up, see what we got. Again, we'll go ahead and hook up our ground clamp here. Make sure this process is as good as we can so everything is as good as it can be.
dude like it wasn't even there oh i cannot tell you guys how cool this thing is now please excuse the cleanness of my cut it's early and i haven't had coffee yet but this is absolutely awesome <laughs> man oh man guys i gotta tell you i couldn't be any more stoked about this thing I mean, please don't use my first 110 example as your deciding factor. I may have went a little overkill with the thickness of material, not to mention my source power is this cute little cord reel with like a 10 amp breaker, whatever. But if you need to do something small and dumb, like cut a piece of 16 gauge sheet metal or a piece of expanded steel or just something dumb, you have that ability and versatility to use either 240 or 120. And the cool thing about a plasma is that you have the ability to cut non-ferrous stuff. So you can do like aluminum, copper, stainless steel. This gives you that versatility and usability that you don't necessarily have with a regular oxy-fuel torch. Not to mention, you don't have to lug around an oxy-fuel torch. You don't have a giant oxygen canister slash missile in the bed of your truck and an acetylene tank. You don't have 100 feet of hoses and that big giant Harris or Victor torch with all the consumables and everything that you gotta change out every 30 minutes because the tips keep getting plugged up. Anyway, you have this cute little thing that you can throw in the passenger seat of your car and you have the ability to cut up to half inch iron. I know this isn't like, a, you're not gonna start a fabrication business with this, but for home and farm use, I think this thing is absolutely invaluable for the price point. This, I, man, this thing really blew away my expectations and it is way better than what I thought it was going to be. Now, like I mentioned before, I'm sure that this thing has a duty cycle just like any other welding machine. That means like how long it's running, how hard it's working versus the time that you can do that much work. This thing will probably cut half inch steel for three minutes before it has to shut down and cool for two minutes. You know what I mean? There's a ratio to what you can do. So as long as you don't have it maxed out, this thing will probably cut steel all day. It's just, uh, guys, I gotta tell you, this thing could not possibly get my endorsement anymore. So if you are interested in getting one of these things for your shop, your home, your farm, whatever, please check out the link in the description to get one of these things for yourself. Because, dude, this is an absolute game changer. The fact that we can cut stuff without using the torch or a grinder, uh, it really is a game changer. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little review slash demonstration and you guys can get one of these things for yourself. So we will see you next time.